Ooh. Okay. Okay. Eye of the bird. Does this mean? I don't know. Why didn't this one break? Hello? <laughs> my OCD. Is not... <laughs> Can I break it? Because my OCD is kicking in. Alright, continuing the last door into episode 2, Memories. Let's see if we can finish this up. Previously. <laughs> last time on Dragon Ball Z. Uh, previously on The Last Door. Jeremiah Devitt receives a mysterious letter from his childhood friend, Anthony Beechworth. He travels to his friend's manor in Sussex, where he learns of Anthony's descent into madness and the death of his wife, Anna Beechworth. Devitt faces the perils of the house and finally finds the dead body of his friend who committed suicide. Anthony's final letter warns Devitt of an unknown danger and asks him to remember his past by going back to the boarding school they both attended years back. Going back to the school they attended years back. I would have said years ago, but... Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Oh. Wait, am I controlling this guy? Oh, okay. Oh, I love the creaky, the creaky floors. Um, can't... Oh! Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth, it is in heaven. As it as it is in. <laughs> okay, nothing. I don't know other stuff. Okay. Give us each our daily bread. Oh wait, he took his cloak off. Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive our debtors. Uh oh. Uh, oh! 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 <laughs> and lead us not into temptation. I don't want to do that again. No! Ah! <laughs> but deliver us from evil. Stop! I'm in! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. Alright, this is getting, getting a little crazy here. Now. Oh, I can hear breathing. Ugh. Now tell me. Where are you? What do you see? Oh. My... Okay, I'm controlling him. What? Oh, with the breathing in my ear. Oh my god, that's so freaky. <laughs> Shouldn't this be like lit up? Okay, where are you? Wait, go back. Go back. No, it's too scary. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. Who is it? Is it Anthony? Answer me. I don't know. I don't want to go anywhere near it. Ah! <laughs> Remember the first episode of this? I was like, I wonder if this game has any jump scares. Yeah, there were some jump scares. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, dear lord. What is she doing? Get closer to her. Get close to Anna. Oh, I don't wanna. Oh. Go back. <laughs> when I count to three, you'll wake up. One. Two. <laughs> Jeez. Three! Now wake up. Wake up, wake up! <gasps> You can rest now, Mr. Devitt. Uh, that will be enough for today. Are these sensations really or sessions really necessary? I am confident that this is the best course of treatment for your symptoms. Now, did you ever see him again? I saw it. What did you see? Can you describe it? Um, I struggled to find adequate words. It looked like an eye. It was like an eye, perfectly round and dark, deep and empty. Accompanied by the most horrifying, pain-filled screams I've ever heard. Inside a, completely, inside a complete darkness. Where an evil dwells deep... Wow, he is really going into... <laughs> First from an eyeball. Like he's... Oof. Um, 
and evil dwells deep below, a forgotten fear for human reasoning, but undoubtedly still rests deep down inside our being. In my case, that fear has already been awoken. Has already come. I can understand why you are disturbed, Mr. Dovett. Uh, with your permission, I would like to consult on your case with a colleague of mine, a man I've known for many years who is more versed in modern psychological practices. I think his knowledge and experience would be very helpful in enabling us to understand your condition. If you think it would help, Doctor, uh, I'll leave it in your hands. The agony grows increasingly unbearable, and if you believe this man can help, then I will welcome his aid. Thank you, Doctor. Well, Wakefield, uh, I bid you good evening. So this must be after, like, what happened at the house. Of course, you find your best friend hung himself in an attic <laughs> and then eaten alive by, well, the crows are alive, but he wasn't alive anymore, but eaten <laughs> by crows. Um, Anthony, my friend, what really happened to you? How could you have let your wife Anna die so awfully? These doubts consume my soul. I hardly remember the time we spent together as soulmates, schoolmates. I confess that beyond your enduring friendship, I can recall little of those years. Where your words are a result of an increasingly loss, were, were, your words a result of an increasingly loss of sanity? In your letter you wrote that someone awaits me, a warning to ward me from a genuine danger or merely the ravings, ravings of a brilliant mind addled by insanity. Something stirs uneasily within my heart. I will not rest easily again until I go back to that boarding school and find out what secrets may lie within. Ho, ho, ho. Da, da, da. Farewell, Mr. and Mrs. Beechworth. Rest now in peace. I love this. It's just so fun. Is this him traveling? Oh, just... Just contemplating in his... <laughs> just here and there. Oh, okay, now it looks like he's traveling now. Okay. Maybe he had to, like, sit around on his bed for a while and think about it. Is this the school? School. Back to school. Going back to school. Got my lunch packed up and my shoes tied tight. I hope I don't get in a fight. An old, quite damaged mailbox. Okay. Is there anything in it? Uh, there is a postcard inside the mailbox. Uh, okay, take it. <laughs> Dear Matthew, it's been several months and still I have heard no news from you. My brothers insist that you have abandoned me, but I am sure you remain true. I know that you would never do that to me. I know your heart and the honesty of your eyes. I got this address from a hospital in London and pray that it reaches you safely. That This is a lot for a postcard because, you know, postcards are only that big. If that is the case, I want you to know that I will uh, be always waiting for you forever yours, Juliet Holloway. I didn't know what kind of voice to do because I had no idea what kind of person was talking at the time. Let's go in. Yeah. There's nothing else inside the mailbox. I realize that. Are we not going inside? Okay, I guess we go this way. Unless this is inside the gate. Is this the inside part? The Angel Gabriel, the school's emblem. I remember it being very pristine, but it looks neglected and dirty now. Okay, nothing else to look at there. Oh, oh, there's some, some maybe something on the ground here. A stone eagle lies on the floor. It appears to have broken off of the fountain. What about... There's something next to it. Okay, can we... Fix it? I can't fix it. Nope. Alright, it's mine now. Souvenir. What's back here? Anything over here? Can we look in a window? What's in a window? Oh, did we have to go in through the window? Wait. Oh, hello, sir. This is all new because in the first chapter there was nobody to talk to. <laughs> good evening. I hope you are right, and this turns out to be indeed a good evening. My name is Devitt. I did not know where there was a graveyard here. 
Well, my pleasure, Mr. Devitt. I am Frank Baldwin. Do not ask me why, but Monsignor specifically ordered to bury the corpses here. Uh, why? Well, I do not understand that. I should let you... Why? Did he order you to bury corpses here? Why? I do not understand. What is there to understand, Mr. Devitt? Uh, God has forsaken this place. Ah, don't you know? Here, we take care of patients. I am an old alumni. I used to attend the school. I'm an old alumni. I used to attend the school. It has been a long time since this has not been a boarding school anymore. Uh, the building, I don't know how I said that weird. Um, the building is now used as a nursing home run by nuns, a uh, former student, eh? Uh, I never heard anybody in the village speak finally of the school. They say it closed overnight, though nobody knows why. Not a lot was known about it. Um, excuse the interruption, Mr. Obama. I'll leave you with your work. Have a nice evening, alumnus Devitt. <laughs> I had to say alumnus. A small group of graves has been haphazardly arranged. A grave recently dug. I can't talk to him anymore. Oh, I guess I can talk to him some more. Excuse me, interruption. I'll leave you with your word. Okay. It lacked a wood coffin. Badly finished. It seems that whoever made it was a bit rushed to finish. Tree. An ancient blackthorn tree twisted by time and weather. All right. So, did we like... Where did we go? Did we walk this way? Did we just... Okay, so... It wasn't the window. It was just I clicked the side okay never mind <laughs> all right let's go inside oh hello nurse nunny uh pardon excuse me sister do it it's like fudge off man uh good evening sister good evening i am mother elizabeth what brings you here mr devitt i'm a porter student of this boarding school as you can see, Mr. Devitt, this stopped being an academic institution a long time ago and is now exclusively dedicated to prayer and the well-being of the patients under our care. I see. Uh, even so, may I please speak to Mr. Devitt? I'm afraid that we are too busy to start wasting time talking about past issues. In addition, there is little to say. We sisters arrived after the boarding school had closed down. Everybody but Monsignor, of course. Monsignor? Exactly. But you didn't answer my question. Why have you come to this place, Mr. Devitt? Uh, it'd be good for me to appreciate the passage of time. This place will help me remember. I prefer not to talk about it. Uh, remember. Ooh, oh! I, I wanted to pick the middle one. I accidentally clicked the bottom. Uh, to be honest, I prefer not to talk about it. I couldn't tell you why this place is so important for me, but it is a lot. Well, I appreciate your honesty, Mr. Devitt. I'll allow you to stay around here. I hope I won't regret my decision. So he's being vague, and she's like, yeah, 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 yeah it's fine, even though she was being very obtuse about it. Um, don't worry, Mother. Uh, thank you. Oh. I guess that's that then. Uh, I live here now. <laughs> All right, so should we go left, right, upstairs? Uh, let's uh, let's parlay over this way. Okay. Oh, Juliet. Um, Juliet. Okay. <laughs> Some bandages and other medical equipment. Uh, nothing of interest. Among the ba uh, baggages, I can see a packet of letters bound by twine. Oh, I'd ask you not to touch my belongings, please. You're not aware who you are talking to. I'm sorry. <laughs> a picture of Saint uh, Calamus de Lele, Lely, a patron saint of the sick hospitals and nurses. He seems to have forsaken this place. Doctor. I'm sorry, I am not a doctor. Pay him no mind. He has been delirious for some days. I'm Miss Mary Vinge. And this is my brother, Matthew. Juliet, <coughs> why have you left me? 
Why don't you answer my letters? <coughs> my letters. You see, the poor man is still obsessed with his fiance. He won't accept that she left him months ago, my poor Matthew. I'm very sorry, Miss Vinge. I hope he recovers. Thank you. Yeah, what are you doing, buddy? How you doing, buddy? Time goes very slowly in this place, as if it stopped. Please let us rest. Oh, fine. A bunch of medical reports. Photographs of people, most likely family and friends of this bed's previous residents. A magazine entitled Weird Tales. By you. Are you alright, madame? There was a rhythmic sound, like a breathing. What do you mean? It was last night. I felt an increasing, increasing pressure on my temple. Something dry and rough, like three bark brushed... Like tree bark. Three bark. <laughs> like tree bark brushed against my leg, and I saw something on the wall, like a growing shadow. I lit the lamp, and there was nothing. I'm sure it was just a nightmare, madame. Okay. Poor woman has fallen into an uneasy, fitful sleep. Empty bed. He is quite pale, young boy. He is asleep. Oh, I can kind of see a head there. <laughs> piety! Or piety? There are several crucifixes all together uh, at the headboard of this bed. Why? Please, someone. Piety. Piety? I am sorry, you cannot be here. Is there some way I can help? Don't worry about it, sir. The Lord looks after each and every one of our patients. He will provide you with all the help you need. If you wish, you can pray there, next to the statue of Our Lady. Don't you think she is beautiful? The Virgin listens to those in need. Mm, okay. Alright. Oh, no! The gloomy statue of the Virgin Mary makes this place even more mournful, if that is even possible. Um, doesn't look like I can pray there. Picture of the Virgin Mary gazing at you supposedly to portray sympathy and compassion for you. However, she seems to look more pained and sorrowful here. Let's see, anything over here? How big is this place? Please help! Uh, I will pay it to Oh. Okay. All right. Do you want a stone ornament or a postcard, perhaps? <laughs> Let's see what we got in here. Bookshelf. I remember that we used to keep here uh, some textbooks, and now there is a music box. Ooh, music box. Maybe somebody wants to listen to some music. Dear brother, I have received your letter, and I'll try to write to you more frequently. I hope you are studying a lot and you feel comfortable there. We miss you a lot. When are you coming back? Father is in bed with fever. I do not feel very well, but I am on medication. Oh, it's a sister. Today... If I can do that. <laughs> Today is my birthday. And I am feeling blue. It is a quiet and boring Sunday at the village. Mom is going to cook a lemon cake like those Grandmama... Grandmama... <laughs> used to make. I wish we could eat it together. Right back soon, I am looking forward to knowing how you are doing, what you are learning, how is Scotland, and so on. A big hug. I think about you a lot, your dear sister. Anything else over here? More letters. January 15th, 1876. Father Ernest seems unusually troubled today. Several times he paused abruptly in the middle of a lecture for no reason, even during his favorite class, Theology. January 18th, 1876. Father, uh, today, Father Ernest was very irritable. Uh, Collins made a comment and was expelled from class for it, and even Devitt, oh, was admonished just for reading a philosophy book. I hope Father Ernest doesn't turn his ire toward me. My father will be disappointed if I failed to get good marks. Uh, it was very disconcerned. Uh, disconcerting? Disconcerning. Disconcerting? To see Father Ernest entering class so pale and sweaty. It is uh, in the middle of his lecture. He stumbled, dazed, and had... Had to sit. 
Father Eugene taught our theology class today, even though he doesn't know the subject matter as well as Father Ernest. When we asked him what happened to Father Ernest, Father Eugene told us that he had taken ill. What worries me is that now Father Eugene is also starting to look unwell. It has been a month since we last saw Father Ernest. We are told that he is still sick, but if he is so ill, then why hasn't a physician come to treat him? My studies are flag flagging, but I have taken it upon myself to read on my own. I hope this helps as I must succeed in spite of the problems happening around us. Oh my goodness. It was announced this morning that the school is too closed. None of us know why, and we cannot get a straight answer from the facility. Faculty. They each dodged the question, and I am starting to think they may not know the answer themselves. Their anxiety is palpable, though they try to hide it behind a calm face. But what about Father Ernest? I heard he alone is to remain after we vacate the premises. There's a picture in the diary. Oh. Ooh, somebody's face is, like, messed up. This is a photograph of my graduating class. Oh. I see myself, Father Ernest, and Anthony. I do not remember the names of the others. One face has been completely scratched out. Cool. The books on the shelves are old and musty. Theology is the dominant subject. There's an odd sentence written on the board. In death there is hope. In death there is life. One must seek its true nature to understand the nothing. It looks like it has been there for years as the chalk has faded in some places. Alright, that looks to be it in here, I think. Nothing else to do in here. I unlocked the door. Ooh, what door is this? Oh! To outside, okay. I guess we'll just go back in. Da, da, da. Please help, I don't know what to do for you. I don't know what to do for any of you. Wait, did I see this? Magazine entitled... Oh, okay, yeah. Weird Tales. Music box. No? Why you? No? Anybody? Music box? Anybody? Why you? No? And... This dude? Nope. How about, how about you? Listen to some music? No? Okay. Let's see what else we can find. Juliet. Alright, um... This way? Oh. Mr. Devitt, you are not allowed to go there. Oh, bite me. What about upstairs? Oh, I can go upstairs, but not to the right. Okay. It does the old tapestry of the Virgin Mary with baby Jesus in her arms. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. Goodbye. Oh. Uh, a syringe next to a flask with a label that reads morphine. Ooh. An old mirror that hardly reflects. It's all vampires. One of the humble beds where the nuns sleep. I just bust it all up in her bedroom. Like, she don't care. On the upper shelf of the antique cupboard, a well-worn Bible and rosary beads gather dust. Bed. Alright. And... Through the big open window, dusk cold wind freezes the room. Good evening, sister. Hmm. Sister. All this suffering, all these tears, all our prayers unanswered. Well, what do you mean, sister? All these years entrusted to the Lord, praying, looking for a sign, for something that can give me strength. Every day I hear them cry, pray, scream, and die. And what for? Where are you, Lord? Why don't you answer me? Um, maybe there is no Lord. Um... Maybe there is no Lord, sister. What should we do, then? What is our purpose for living? I can't go on. Not like this. Excuse me, sir. Alright, can I take your morphine? <laughs> Alright, I guess. Bye. Alright. Let's see what else we got. Anything over here? 
A worn out and faded tapestry of Jesus. Another tapestry, though, I remember from my school days, the student dormitory was here. Oh. Hmm. I wonder if there's a way to get this open at some point. Just a couple of old towels. Broken mirror, there is a protruding piece. Oh, okay. Let's see. There's a puddle on the shower hole with something shining under the grating. I cannot see it properly. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, oh eh? No. Uh, let's see. Tap of the shower. If I open the tap, the shiny object could be carried away by the stream of water. Oh. Okay, I guess we don't want to do that. Then why make it an option? Alright, so I can't see it properly. So I need a light, I guess. And this is it. That's the only places I can go, apparently. Alright. So I've got a piece of mirror. I don't know where to use that. Maybe... No. 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 Oh! I'm not sure if this person is the recipient of this letter. Oh. I just have to find somebody that um, that letter belongs to. We can do that. Um. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Okay, dear. Ma oh, Matthew. Okay. Oh. Okay. Matthew. 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 Um. To the left, I think. To the left, to the left. Here you go, Matthew. Mr. Vinge, I think this letter is addressed to you. Oh, thank you. Uh, leave it with me, uh, if you'd be so kind. As you can see, my brother is too weak to read it. Well, Matthew, let's see who has written you. Oh, it's a letter from our mother. Dear Matthew, I hope you're recovering. I wish that... Dot, dot, dot. Your beloved sister and you come back home soon. Dot, dot, dot. Well, that's not what it was. Do you remember the good times when we all lived together? You know how a lone mother feels since you left. Mother needs more care now than ever. She worries a lot. Do you remember the... Hmm. Maybe I can... Oh. Oh. My letters, all my letters I wrote to dear Juliet. You never posted them, but to why, Mary? Why would you do such a thing? <laughs> how could you be so cruel? I had to do it, Matthew. You refuse to see how inappropriate a match she is for you. Her only interest is in marrying someone of your status, of our family's status. It was for your sake I did this. I did it to protect you from that woman's treachery. No, you only thought about yourself. Of your vanity. I can't bear to look upon you anymore, Mary. Leave me be. From this day forth, you are no sister of mine. You dare banish me? I will have stayed by your side all through your illness. Very well, Matthew. You will have your way. I will leave you, and then you'll see how very alone you are. Farewell, brother. Well, well that turned out right. Thanks be to the Lord that you have come to reveal my sister's cruelty, sir. Please take this coin as a token of my appreciation. Does my lucky... I started talking like he's a vampire. It is my lucky coin, though I hope it serves you better than it has myself. <laughs> he feels better now. Um, I hope it brings me better luck than Mr. Vinge. Let's see, I don't know what to do with this coin. 
Um, okay, she's asleep. And he's asleep. I just, I don't know what to do here. Um, you want a coin? No. You want the music box? No. Oh. Um, probably it belonged to one of the students. How did I... How did I get it to op open? That was... I don't know how I got it to uh, play music. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. I don't know. Let's go back outside, I guess. That guy's just digging a grave. Um, nothing over here. Let's see. Maybe he wants the music box? Hey, do you know anything about this? Okay. I don't think that breaking... Oh, okay. Nope, he doesn't want that. Yeah, no, you want this coin? No, no, okay. Okay. Uh, I can do there. Oh! The coin unlocks the music box. Okay. So maybe that Matthew guy, he had the coin, so maybe the music box. Hmm, okay. I guess not. Alright, go back downstairs. Maybe the other nun? Um, let's see. Bam! <laughs> I want your... Okay. Oh! Oh, what a beautiful melody. It reminds me of my youth when I was vibrant and full of purpose. I knew my path then. Oh, may God bless you. For you have given me the sign I was looking for. Oh. Alright, cool. <laughs> okay, now what do I do with it? Do I just... Here you go. Like, leave it here for you? You can have it. I don't... Apparently I don't need it anymore. I can't take that. Oh, a window. Okay. Alright. From this vantage point, I can see the roofs of Aberdeen beyond that, uh, tops of trees? Okay, that's nice. A lot of dry leaves have accumulated in the hole of this old rusty pipe there, blocking the water stream. Uh, I think that would be useless. I don't know. Can I just, like, oh. Okay. The hole has a very sharp and rusty edge. If I try to put my hand in, I could cut myself. Um. Oh. I blended the sharp edges of the pipe. Now I, I need not fear being cut. There's nothing now to impede the water stream. Okay. Alright, I guess we'll go outside. Hey buddy. How goes it? Oh I can oh I can walk further. Oh <laughs> Is there what's up what's this? Oh okay, a whole different area I didn't even realize I could get to. <laughs> a piece of old fishing net. Uh, a nun's habit and walking stick. <gasps> These no doubt belong to the nun I spoke to by the window, but where did she go? Oh, She's... With the Lord. Many years of drift have perfectly smoothed this, uh, flopped them into a small log. Okay. 
The Lost Pilgrim, a C stack older wait. A C stack older students at the school used to climb. Somewhere up there are my initials. Hmm. Okay. So I have a log and a net. I mean, why is that stuff there? They're not going to let me take it. Yeah, so... I don't think it's useful at all to place that in the pipe. Oh, I see. There we go. The net should catch anything coming down the pipe. Now, okay. Now we'll go over and turn the spigot. Why did the music stop? It always gets creepy when the music stops. Okay, there we go. Now do it. Bingo. Alright, now we'll go back to the room. I don't know how it goes from underneath this floor to the side of the building, but we got it figured out. Yeah, the net has caught the shiny object. A teardrop. What? Is a glass tear probably once belonged to a piece of jewelry. All right. So I guess that belongs to somebody. Um, what about you? You want this? You still want you want this log? <laughs> All right. Let's see. What about you? No. Okay. Juliet, how are you? Are you awake? No. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mournful. I wonder if. No, it's not for you. Not for you either. Oh, I have placed the glass tear in a hollow in the Virgin Mary's cheek. It seems that it fits perfectly. Um, in the eyes of the fervent devotee, it could look like a real tear. If only I could make it shine. Oh. Oh. Oh, the our mother is crying. Oh my lord, what does it mean? What have I done? What have we done? All right, see ya. Okay. Now can I talk to this guy? You you must help me. <clears throat> what can I do for you? What's wrong with you? There's little time. I tell them about my pain. I describe the unbearable and endless pain, yet they do not listen. They pass me by without even looking at me. They say that they are praying for me, but it does not cure my ailment. But sir, I, I know, but I beseech you, you will be saving me from horrible torture. I will be eternally indebted to you. It will, however difficult this will be for me. Um, yeah, let's help him out. I understand. Uh, your request is terribly hard for me. I guess I could find the courage to help you. I understand the magnitude of what I'm asking. God bless you, sir. Do not know how I can show my gratitude. What I need you to do is, without the nuns noticing, try to get an amount of morphine enough so that I can be embraced by the deepest of dreams and in that way stop the rhythm of my heart. I... I gotcha, buddy. I gotcha. And blessed... Uh, alright. Wink. <laughs> See ya! <laughs> Without them noticing, it's like it didn't even take any... anything. So these two, I guess, just, you know, whatever. Oh wait, there's a talk bubble there. Oh wait, is he... <laughs> what? What? There's a note on the bed.
Oh, okay. Can I still take it or? Okay, no, I guess not. He's asleep. Are you awake now? All right. Um. So I've got the morphine. Um. Give it to you. <laughs> I don't know. Where did he go? I can't remember who Baldwin is. Um. Oh. Noises coming from inside the coffin. What in heaven? I cannot open the coffin with my own hands. The lid is nailed. The log is too soft even to use it as a lever and open the coffin. Okay. Did he have like a shovel? Isn't there like a shovel? I think he would have had a shovel. Um... I don't know. So I need something tougher to get that pry to open. Oh. Uh, tell me about Monsignor. I cannot rightly say, after all these years, I have never seen that man. Who knows, maybe he does not exist. Uh, have a nice evening. It looks like his toolbox, I wonder if there is something useful in it. Might be able to take a look if I keep him distracted. Um. <laughs> Just stab him with a morphine? <laughs> Please do not touch my tools. How do I distract him? Uh, tell me about this place. Well, the construction of the building was ordered by an ep Episcopal Bishop of Aberdeen in 1805. Tell me about Aberdeen. It was a place where I was born and raised, one of the biggest cities in Scotland. If you look there towards the east, the chapel tower is the highest point of the city. Oi, uh, you seem a bit distracted, Mr. Devitt. Oh, don't worry about it. Tell me about Mother Elizabeth. She's pretty strict, I can tell you for that much, uh, Mr. Devitt. Do not think she likes me very much either. Alright. I'll leave you to your work, sir. Alumnus. <laughs> Why don't you go, alumnus? Alright, let's see if we can prop this open here. It's a monster! It's a vampire! It's a cat! Ooh! Oh! The darkness of his eye! His body is petrified. He has a look of sheer terror in his eyes. Oh my god! What has happened? Talk, talk to me! Mother Elizabeth is trying to make him come to his senses. Bonk him! <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what to do. Can I help? What about what about this? Does that help anybody? No. Uh. No. Uh. Are you sure you don't want some morphine? Okay. I don't know. Oh wait, she's distracted. Ha ha. She is... S is distracted. So we can go to... The other direction. Haha! -ha. What's she got here on her desk? These are the papers on which Mother Elizabeth uh, was working. Take... Oh. William Needlands, November 13th, cause of death. Uh, Calexia. Scratch marks have been found on the stomach. Elmer Moore. Cause of death, uh, pleurisia. Uh, clear expression of terror on the patient's paralyzed face. Death, marismo. Panelists in the body. Bunch of deaths. 
died while he was sleeping. Morphine, morphine, I can't talk. Morphine overdose. Hmm. Interesting. What else? A large, bright, and ornate key. Well, yeah, we're taking that. The door is locked. Oh, gee, I wonder what to do here. Yoink. Oh. Uh, don't look into his eyes. Okay. Because the deepest darkness. Oh, I'm getting like a chill. Like just went up my body <laughs> for some reason. It's not even that spooky what it is. Dwells in his eyes. Oh boy. Do it. Come in, my son. Do you think you could hide these books from me? They are just classic philosophy books, father. Plato and Aristotle. Silence, instruments of falsehood, you mean. Fallacies coming from the snake. Now, son, get on your knees and raise your arms. <laughs> Apologize to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. Oh, ah! It is Latin. Uh, malum in sea, evil in itself. Ooh. A strange eye shaped symbol. Ooh! Okay. Okay. <laughs> eye of the bird. Does this mean? I don't know. Why didn't this one break? Hello? <laughs> my OCD. <is> not <laughs> Can I break it? Because my OCD is kicking in. A set of crucifixes next to the door. Okay, here we go. Do it. Lord, your eyes burn me. I don't deserve mercy nor forgiveness. Oh Lord, have mercy on my soul. Who are you sending me? Is death to whom you are handing me over? Has my hourglass already run out of sand? Father Ernest. Ernest? It's been many years since I last heard that name. Since... Oh, I see. Father, I'm here to be able... Um, yeah. Father, I'm here to be able to remember. You have to help me, I beg you. Please. Entreaties. Petitions. Praying. Torment. Exemption. Pastimes bring us just misfortune and pain. Father Ernest, I was one of your students. One of my old students, you say. It's only the Lord who teaches us. We all must follow this ordinance and disciplines. Get close, son. Come pray next to me. No! Okay, I guess we... I guess that's just what's going on. The makeshift altar is coated in a dense layer of wax. The candles having almost burned out only barely illuminate the room. A creepy image of Christ crucified. Inexplicably, it has a dark cloth covering its head. Ooh. Okay. It has a large burn covering his eyes. He is completely blind. Despite his decrepitude, extreme thinness, and paleness, I can still recognize Father Ernest. But he seems far away, like in another world. Um. Nope. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Now, my son, tell the Lord which one is his voice, the sharp sword, the wise quill, or the delicate petal. Um... The sharp sword. Eh? Hmm? Yes, yes, that is it, my son. The Lord with his sharp sword transmits us his wisdom, his power, and his punishment. And now, my son, tell the Lord which one of his holy path, which one is his holy path, the wise virtue, the endless blame, or the blessed penance. Um, the blessed penance? No, no, your soul lives embraced by the darkness. And now, my son, tell me the Lord, tell the Lord, 
who you are, the Faceless Pilgrim, the Gate Guard, or the Lost Seaman. The Lost Seaman? Yes, yes, that is it, my son. We live lost in an endless ocean of sin and blame. Now leave me alone, I have to purify my soul. No, go back. There's stuff in there. Mumble, mumble. I know you are there. You didn't hear me? Get out of my room. Oh. How do we... Despite being blind, he preserves good hearing. I must be more careful when moving. Oh, jeez. I can't even... Um... Okay, so... Hmm. Oh, I can only move when he moves. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Alright. Because he's moving around too, so... <laughs> An old razor blade stained with blood. Oh! <gasps> That's so we can get into the other place. Or wait for him to cough. Oh. Uh, dear God in heaven, I feel for you. Your light is in my eyes. I will burn them for you, dear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Alright. Um... Uh. <coughs> okay. Well, I got one I needed, I guess. So, although that thing fell, so I wonder if is that okay? That's nothing. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Let's go. Is it upstairs? Yeah into our old room. I don't know what to do with the morphine, though. I won't be able to cut this so thick tapestry using just the razor in my hand. Oh, um... There? Using the wooden stump as a handle I can use to cut. Ah! Alright. Oh! Here we go again. And finally, our expert on philosophy, Jeremiah Devitt, shows up. Uh, where were you, my friend? We have been looking for you. Well, as I was saying, tonight is the perfect moment for our next meeting, but I suspect that someone outside our group is secretly surveying us. Who is it, Anthony? My dear friend, it is Professor Glenn. Do you mean Father Ernest? Certainly. No doubt about it. Therefore, dear colleagues, I have decided to change the venue for tonight's meeting. Have you noticed the lounge behind the small door of the classroom? I have believed uh, convenient to borrow the key for our necessities. You already know, at 12 o'clock you will find that the door opened and I'll be inside the lounge. That is it, my dearest colleagues. Vidit is quits blah blah blah. Oh. I remember that in the furnishings we used to keep some of our personal belongings, now it's empty. Oh boy. Right, is the glass gonna crack here too? Maybe not. The walls are a complete disarray. I could probably punch through it if I tried. I remember that this is the bed where I used to sleep when I was a student here. Oh. Good night! <laughs> oh. Mr. Rabbit was jumping through the forest in a warm spring afternoon. Okay. When going through a bush, Mr. Rabbit ran into Mr. Wolf, Mr. Vulture, and Miss Snake, who were having a heated argument. Okay. Mr. Rabbit, curious, ask them, dearest, why are you arguing in this beautiful and cheerful spring afternoon? Mr. Wolf answered politely, what are we trying to decide here? 
is who of us will have the pleasure to eat you up? Ooh. Mr. Rabbit, really scared, said, but I do not want to be eaten. I want to live. Uh, tough. Tatas. To which Miss Snake answered, smiling, that is impossible to happen, Mr. Rabbit, since we all, uh, both you and I, you and us, are going to die sooner or later. Don't you think so? No. Oh, there's some shape right there. Mr. Vulture added, Miss Snake is right. We should stick to the issue at hand. It is getting late, and as you see, we do not agree. Do you want to help us decide, Mr. Rabbit? Who would you suggest as the one to eat you? Uh, there's something there. After thinking about it for a while, Mr. Rabbit came up with an idea and carefully said, I got it. Why not to organize a race? The first who arrives to the forest clearing will have the privilege to eat me. No doubt Mr. Wolf can run at high speed, but Mr. Vulture can go flying and avoid any obstacles, and I am sure that Miss Snake knows all the shortcuts within the forest. What do you think? Mm, who are these people? The three predators agreed that it was fair, so they started the race, and they quickly disappeared. <laughs> and the rabbit ran away. <laughs> Mr. Rabbit, happy to trick them, started running at high speed in the opposite direction of the predators who, eager to prove their worth, didn't realize the trick. Mr. Rabbit was far away from there and finally felt safe, happy and proud of his cunning, but suddenly there was a loud bang. The earth shook, frightened birds flew, and everything went dark. Ooh! Possible love? There's something I kept to myself for a long time. And the thing is that I love you. I have always loved you. Since the first time I saw you, since the first time I felt your frozen hands. Each time I move away from you, I miss your glassy, empty, dead eyes. <laughs> I miss your rough hair, your grayish skin, your stench. But our love just cannot be. It's an impossible love. So I'll bury you. The end. Oh. No, not again. How long have I been asleep? What was that all about? In the nightmare, I found a place, a place in my memories. Hmm. What? Trapdoor. Oh! This is the... Oh, this is where he's talking about. From here sprouts a horrible stench. There's something down there. Oh, let's go figure... Oh! Did you see? Did you see? It was there, just in front of me. That thing! It was screaming! Oh. He shakes uncontrollably, his body rackled with pain. And there's only one way to end his suffering. Mm. Rest in peace. Okay. Stretchers used to carry the corpses here. Who is behind all this? Oh my gosh. He must have been dead at least a week, still bearing an expression of horror. Oh my gosh. The decayed corpse of a young woman. It seems as if she has been devoured by an animal. Oh my gosh, what is going on here? The walls are splattered with dried blood. Punctual as always, Devitt. Now all that remains is to introduce our guest. You may come in now, Professor. Father Ernest! 
Do not worry, my friend. I invited him to join us this evening. The professor genuinely shares our curiosity, and who better to complete our group than one of the most renowned theologists? Moreover, we mustn't ban those who are willing to explore beyond the veil. The moment we have long waited has now arrived. Please, all of you, take a seat and we shall begin the procedure. Soon shall the door be opened, and then may we finally see what lies beyond. Now I ask that you close your eyes. You will feel a momentary prick as I inject you with the serum. Ugh. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's the eye. <gasps> Even after all these years, I have not forgotten your voice. You are the fourth witness. I remember. I remember now what happened. What is that we saw? The eye of the bird, Malum in C. What happened to us? What is it that we witnessed? You must tell me. You must make me understand what my mind cannot fathom. It was our curiosity that damned us. We opened that which should not be opened. In doing so, we shorn the veil that separated our world from his. In seeking vision, we were ourselves seen by the eye of the bird. It remembers us. It looks for us. It calls us from its dark nest. From its abominable lair. All these years, I have attempted to return it, return to it, but I have no strength left. These poor wretched creatures are too fragile. They lack the sight to return. Not one of them has. Only us, the four witnesses. Who are the other two? Where are they? They disappeared as you did. I haven't heard from any of you. But I was seized by curiosity. It absconded with my faith and deprived me of my sanity. Oh Lord, forgive me, for I have sinned. Nothing remains. All that is left is surrender. Surrender to him. Gravely. Have we sinned, and now our only absolution is to burn, to burn in the flames. <gasps> oh! This is not good. This is not good. Hello? I think we're locked in a coffin. Oh, we're getting buried. The adventure continues in episode three. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, all right. That's how episode two ended. Um, the last door. <laughs> I cannot wait to see what happens in the next two episodes. So we're going to cut that here. Um, hope you guys are enjoying these. Um, wow. This is, this. yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm really, really, really digging this. Um, again, my name is Jay, AKA Dr. Vot. Uh, don't forget to like, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more great indie pixel fun and uh, we'll see you guys next time yeah <laughs> wow